acute tubular necrosis. Look at the name, you know the pathophysiology. The injury and necrosis of the tubular cells. Okay, we get impaired reabsorption due to these injuries, and you're gonna get obstruction of tubules. Okay, and that's because of this obstruction, because you have these dead cells in the tubes. They're gonna slough off and then cause plugging up of the tubules. So let's say you have necrosis here, cells on this tubule wall die, they're gonna fall off, and then you're gonna cause plugging and obstruction. So that's not good. Now etiology, what can be causes of cell death of these tubular cells? The etiologies are either ischemic or nephrotoxic, okay? Ischemic is if you have poor renal blood flow, look at all these blood vessels. These all these blood vessels supply these renal tubular walls. These renal tubular walls need blood too. And if they if you don't get enough blood, they're gonna get necrosis. And the two most common places you get necrosis are actually the proximal commonly tubule and then the thick ascending limb. Okay. Next you can also have nephrotoxic problems. Because you have all these toxic substances that get filtered through the kidney and then they're going to be in contact with these tubular cells, and they're going to cause damage. Unfortunately, you need to memorize these ones. So, imaging contrast. That's why a lot of times when you, when you think about giving, getting a patient a CT with contrast, you really need to think about their kidney, kidney um, function, because if you, you run the risk of damaging their kidneys even more and really just messing them up. So that's imaging contrast can cause kidney damage. Medications, aminoglycosides, cisplatin can cause acute tubular necrosis. And then the last two are my rhabdomyolysis and li tumor lysis syndrome. And these can cause production of all these extra toxins of myoglobin urate that are not good for your kidney cells. So, imaging contrast, medications, rhabdomyolysis, tumor lysis syndrome. Clinical features. What are you going to see? Remember, this was basically intrinsic renal failure, which I talked about intrinsic acute kidney injury. So what's going to happen? What happens? How do we even define that? Remember, what was the, the, the way we can diagnose it? When we said it was either increased in serum creatinine or decreased urine output. So that's what you're going to see here. Do you remember what, what, what characteristic cast that we saw with acute tubular necrosis? Remember that characteristic cast was the brown granular class cast. So again, you already, you already know all this. Decreased urine output brown granular cast, this is what it looks like. If you ever see this picture, your answer is acute tubular necrosis. Okay, lab features consistent with intrinsic renal injury. And we talked about that already, so, but if you wanna talk, if you wanna review it again, you can do it. Basically, remember we looked at reabsorption. Reabsorption was impaired. And then we looked at urine osmolarity. Urine osmolarity, goes down because you have, you're not be able to reabsorb that water. Water stays in the urine. Water, urine's very dilute. Urine sodium, FENA, there's decreased excretion, uh, there's increased excretion, excuse me, because you're not reabsorbing. And then your serum BON creatinine ratio goes down because you're not reabsorbing that BON. Okay. Now you're gonna have this oliguria, which is this fancy term for decreased urine output. You can have this for two or three weeks because that's how long it takes for these tubular cells to recover and to re to regrow and have and allow you to have improved kidney function again. After that, the kidney will once the tubular cells have regenerated, the patient will then enter a recovery phase, and they will be polyuric. That means they're peeing a lot more than usual, and you also have renal wasting of electrolytes and minerals. So that's just something to take note of. After this recovery, they're actually going to pee a lot more. They'll be peeing on a bunch of electrolytes. So you'd have to watch out for that because their electrolytes will be lower, um, which could be something that you need to replenish because they're wasting all their electrolytes. Next is acute interstitial nephritis, another cause of intrinsic renal injury. This is due to inflammation of, of the renal interstitium, and it's due to a hypersensitive, hypersensitivity reaction to medications. The medications we want that can cause this are NSAIDs, penicillins, and diuretics. So the easy way to remember this is pain, penicillin, P. Pain for NSAIDs, penicillin for penicillin, P for diuretics. Again, it's a hypersensitivity reaction to medication that causes inflammation in the renal interstitium. So this isn't in the tubules. This is in the, all the meat between the tubules. Okay, that's the interstitium. So what will be the clinical presentation of this? 
Again, we said it's the acute causes of acute kidney injury, so you see all that stuff. You see oliguria, which is decreased urine output. You see that increased creatinine. And then you have a hypersensitivity reaction. What are the symptoms of that? Well, in general, you see things like a fever, a rash. You see eosinophils in the urine. Eosinophils from the hypersensitivity reaction. And because this is precipitated by drugs, if you stop the drugs, your symptoms will resolve. Now note that this can progress to renal papillary necrosis. So what is renal papillary necrosis? It's necrosis, I mean, look at the name, necrosis of the renal papillae, and usually it's due to ischemia, actually. And this is, you know, as what the heck is a renal papillae? The renal papillae is this, what I've circled, and it's where the pyramid, pyramids drain into the renal pelvis, okay? These are the pyramids, this is the pelvis, and this is the area where they drain. Now, renal papillary necrosis itself has many etiologies. The main overarching thing, though, is decreased blood flow, and I want to explain why. All right, first of all, pyelonephritis is kidney injury, like kidney inflammation. Okay, kidney inflammation that itself can cause damage, so this is the kind of the exception. But sickle cell disease or trait, you can get sickling of cells, and they're gonna plug up all these little vessels that supplies this area. Okay, sickling of cells causing plugging up causing poor blood flow to this renal papillae. Analgesic use, things like NSAIDs. NSAIDs, remember, what, they, what do they cause? They cause vasoconstriction. They decrease prostaglandins, cause vasoconstriction. Um, and so you're going to get, again, you're going to get poor blood flow to the kidney and to the, to the renal papillae. Finally, diabetes mellitus. How does that cause decreased blood flow? Remember, diabetes mellitus, enzymatic, non-enzymatic glycosylation of vessels. And then that's going to thicken up the vessels. And it's going to cause decreased blood flow. So pyelonephritis, sickle cell disease, analgesics, diabetes, nephritis, all can cause renal papillary necrosis. If you want a mnemonic, first aid is a pretty good one. And the clinical features here, again, you have damage and death of all these cells right in front of the ureter. So they're, they're going to cause bleeding, and the bleeding is going to go straight into the ure ureter. You're going to get gross hematuria. And it's going to hurt, so you're going to get flank pain. So that's our little review of our intrinsic kidney problems. So acute tubular necrosis, acute interstitial nephritis, and then we have this renal papillary necrosis. All right, on to the next section.